Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu and today I am going to tell you about uh, EDIAC. So, European degree in uh, anesthesia and intensive care medicine. So, it is usually done after uh, MD anesthesia or DNB anesthesia as an add-on degree. I will just tell you why you should do that particular degree. So, basically if your uh, plan is to go to UK in future, then this is a go to uh, degree because uh, there are different ways of going to UK. Number one is writing a lab. After VBS, people are going, we'll go in that way. So number two is uh, uh, doing ADIAC. The moment you do ADIAC, you will get a GMC registration number and uh, you can apply for different hospitals in UK. It's a pretty straightforward course it will become if you do ADIAC. And uh, the third way is to uh, not do ADIAC, going with MD anesthesia, but for that some trust hospital should sponsor your GMC number. So by doing ADIAC, you, you, are, uh, uh, you know the process to enter UK will become very easy. So that is an advantage and also you will enter in a better uh, uh, level when you enter UK and your salary also will be slightly higher. So these are the advantages of doing ADIAC. And if your plan is to enter Middle East uh, uh, countries like Dubai, Abu Dhabi also, uh, they uh, accept Indian degrees but the valuation will be always for European degrees only and American degrees. So for that also I feel ADIAC if you have, you will have a special advantage there and your salary also uh, will be slightly higher than the uh, MDs who are applying along with you. So that is the advantage of doing ADIAC. And uh, if you are even in uh, you know India also when you are applying for a job or when you are applying for uh, as a consultant in some places, if you have an additional degree, you are always uh, more respected than others because uh, the degree comes with uh, a separate skills and separate knowledge. So that is what is the advantage of doing ADIAC. And today I will just tell you uh, how actually you have to apply for ADIAC and. Uh, what are the different uh, parts in that? So let's uh, dive into the video. So basically, uh, European degree in uh, anesthesia and critical care exam is a test of knowledge. You can see it is not the skills that they're testing, they're testing the knowledge. As an overview, it has two parts. And uh, part one is mainly uh, a multiple choice question based exam where uh, 60 MCQs will be given to you and uh, you need to answer them in a period of 90 minutes if you're writing an online exam. So in part one, uh, usually they uh, test the basic science uh, in paper A and in paper B, they will be uh, uh, testing the clinical anesthesia and intensive care. I'll show you some sample questions. So totally, uh, there are two papers of 60 questions. So in part one, paper A will be on basic science and paper B will be on uh, and the clinical anesthesia. So the questions will be something like this. You can see here. So these questions are downloaded from the previous uh, uh, IDEA paper. So in pa part one, which is the basic science, mostly they'll be asking about you know tissue oxygenation and they will give uh, you know some five options each question is called as a stem there and then what happens is you know, so in the exam another block will open here and true or false you have to put so inadequate tissue oxygenation may occur in spite of normal PO2 in the presence of anemia if it is true it is true and in this situation a shift in the shift to the left of oxyhemoglobin curve if it is true or false you just have to put true or false here if everything is correct then you will get a mark and there is no negative marking in uh, EDIAC part 1 exam. So that is about uh, the paper A. And paper B also I downloaded. Let me go into that. So paper B. So this is paper B in part 1. Where they go more of clinical based questions. You can see mechanical ventilation of normal patient during entire course of anesthesia is associated with. So there are few options true and false you have to put. So, if uh, all the five options are correct, then you will get uh, uh, one mark in that. And there is no negative marking, so you can you know, actually answer all the questions here. But the duration is that uh, 90 minutes you will get it for an online exam. So that is about the 
part 1 so let's come to the part 2 exam so part 2 exam mainly consists of a viva so it's more of a examiner will be there and viva will be conducted so even in ediac part 2 uh, to write part 2 you need to pass part 1 that is obviously without passing part 1 you don't get eligibility to write part 2 and between part 1 and part 2 there is one important thing so part 1 you can write even during your PG time and for writing part 2 you should have finished your post graduation and you should get a letter from the HOD that you passed and you have to submit your degree and also you should uh, have a passed part 1 so part 1 you can write during your MD or DNB and part 2 you have to write only after you finish your degree when, once you register in the medical council so part 2 is uh, usually conducted uh, live so it is in Europe or South America between February and November it will be usually conducted and it is a single day program where uh, they are called it they call it SOIs structured oral examination just like viva and 25 minutes uh, will be uh, each for each session and two examiners will be there so that is about the part 2 and for people who actually want to get trained uh, before going to the actual exam there is an in training assessment also where uh, you can actually sit and uh, you know virtually you can try the exam but even for this you have to pay some amount around 50 euros you have to pay for this so this is about uh, the in training assessment and online assessment also is there so before going to the main exam you can actually try once before going there so that is about that and uh, I want to show you how much uh, yeah so that's about the uh, part one and all that so what is the knowledge that is expected uh, from you before going to the exam is that basic science are expected uh, uh, they expect you to know about respiratory and cardiovascular physiology, neurophysiology, renal and hepatic physiology. So read physiology be books better. In my previous video I told you uh, there is a very good physiology book. You can go into my previous video and check out books for first year in anesthesiology. Link is there in the description. Okay. So that's about that. And uh, you need to know, uh, know about clinical anesthesiology. There uh, you have to know about X-rays, ECG, ultrasound, PET scan. And in resuscitation, you need to know about ACLS, BLS. Intensive care, you need to know all the infections, sepsis, antimicrobials, and uh, all these things are required. And so coming into details of EDIAC part one exam, uh, I told you before, there are uh, each, every paper has 60 questions and uh, followed by five statements I explained before and uh, you need to score uh, one mark for each correct answer that is like one stem will carry one mark and there is no penalty for incorrect answers so next is ediac part 2 and in part 2 there are uh, totally of uh, there are totally uh, four 25 minute oral examinations so in first oral examination it is more of basic science physiology and anatomy and uh, second station you will have the pharmacology and clinical measurement so each station 10 minutes they will give you time for you to prepare and then they will actually start the viva and the third station you have anesthesia and uh, management of critical incidents and fourth station you have critical care and emergency medicine so I would uh, just show you how the questions look like this is what I downloaded there so in basic science they will give you a scenario like this uh, how is the action potential generated and conducted in the heart discuss the relationship between the cardiac action potential how are electrical and mechanical events in the cardiac cycle related this is the question they will put in for you and you need to answer that and in clinical they will give scenarios like a 70 year male coming for total hip replacement with ejection systolic murmur so how do you actually you know manage this case so you will answer this question so answering the question is like anesthetic manual you have to tell what is the preoperative you know evaluation what do you see and interoperative what are your anesthetic goals and postoperative pain how do you manage you have to answer in that way and uh, you have to consider like you know ejection systolic murmur is there so these are the possibilities uh, what i think and what pre-op investigations i want like an echo i would do so all that you have to answer like more practical way in clinical equations so that is about the part two questions and uh, at the end of it they will give you uh, either pass or fail so if you pass part 1 then you will be eligible you uh, will be eligible to part 2 and uh, if you fail in part 2 you don't have to repeat part 1 again you can again attempt the part 2 so that is about the part 2 and uh, so 
that's about the part one and part two even there is another clinical scenario that is given so this full pdf i'll put it in the description you can go through this and in the viva section they even show images so every examiner will get his images an x-ray they might put or they might show you an ecg any image can be shown a diagram or a graph or a statistical graph anything can be shown or oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve can be shown so that's about the uh, exam and pattern so i would just like to uh, show you uh, the recommended books that the ediac people suggest so these are the list of books you can see so they suggest uh, smith and Aitken hair textbook of anesthesia and also anesthesia and intensive care medicine uh, for uh, and you know frci study guides and they suggest uh, morgan and uh, clinical anesthesia 8th edition by paul barash so all the books they're suggesting one interesting book which I found is that the yeah thousand practice MCQs for primary and final FRC here maybe this is good for your you know EDIAC part one where all of MCQs so so these are the list of books that they suggest I'll put all these links in the description don't worry I'm going a little faster so that is about the uh, different books what you are supposed to or what they suggest to read so what I, I recommend is when you are preparing if you can write off idea part 1 it will also help you during your MD preparation and once you prepare your MD when you are loaded with subject then give the part 2 so that both the steps will be cleared so mutually you will get benefited your MD preparation and EDI preparation if you can do parallelly then it will be uh, very useful for you that is a very uh, important thing you need to do so how much money to pay is part 1 is around 300 euros for writing exam and part 2 is around 550 euros so totally you need to spend around 1000 euros to write the total uh, exam to finish all the examinations if you want to go for trial exams they are charging around 50 euros so that is the cost for this one so in this video I covered uh, why you should do ADIAC and uh, how to you know uh, prepare what are the different parts and what type of uh, this one in application everything is online you can go into the same website I will put even the link of this they have an official website so this is the website European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care website will be there. So even this link I will put in the description, you can go there, you have to become a member and apply for the exam online. So that is the process of EDIAC. Hope th this video I did because one of the subscriber actually is uh, messaging multiple times to do this video. That's why I did this. And the next uh, uh, video is uh, Path to UK I am doing. So what are the different ways? and in detail we will see all the ways and which is better uh, how much time it will take and uh, what are the uh, pros and cons also let us deal in another video in future okay as usual dr dheeraj maspur logging off roger that